It's mating season in the adult red belly piranha tank. They've turned so dark. This one is homing over the nest. The female is pretty much being enticed by all the males in the area, but this guy has been working hard on building a nest. Real dark colors. They turn dark like this when they go into mating season, from what I have learned. And sure enough, you could see they're, they're in a different mode altogether. Every time after heavy feeding, they go into this more or less courtship-like innuendos, swimming and rubbing on things and whiskering and kicking up the dust. You can see all the little sand kicked up everywhere as they're preparing their, this is the latest spot, I believe right here is where they're gonna try to lay some eggs. So hopefully we'll bear witness to it and I'll keep you updated, my friends. Red Bullet Piranha adults are heavy into mating season. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to another episode of Bearski Method. I'm glancing back at the juniors over here, my rescue piranhas as they have, well, let's just say, exhibited some sort of new behavior. I haven't observed, even in my piranha that I raised from Little Fry, the original Red Belly Piranha Pack, as I call them. Uh, they are pack animals. Um, they have, did something new, I haven't seen it before. You, I don't know if you can see it right now, but I'll zoom in a little bit. There's a, basically, remnants of what used to be a, uh, Anubia, you know, one of those plants that I have uh, placed all over the tank. They decided to dislodge that one and devoured it. Oddly enough, you know, the carnivorous fish have actually supplied some, you know, extra nutrients from a plant. Now, whether you think that's uh, suggestive to their omnivorous tendencies, as I mentioned in my very first video, <laughs> As we first, you know, I first introduced, you know, my piranhas to YouTube and you guys, and uh, we talked about their omnivorous tendencies as they are opportunists. And in times where food is scarce, they will eat even each other. Believe me, any kind of plant in the tank, including, you know, some of the hardiest will get devoured. So having seen that, it signals two things. First off, I might have waited too long in between the feedings uh, as I mentioned, I feed them now more often, but smaller amount than putting something really big and causing like a really huge, you know, hunt. Uh, <laughs> I have companions as usual, my friends. Zara and I uh, went for a ride. I don't think he's ready to go outside, but anyway. What's up, Zara? Yeah, good boy. A little pit bull runt. Uh, he's growing fast, my friends. He's nine months old, 60 pounds and growing. Anyway, going back to piranhas, the juveniles devour the plant, showing signs of perhaps, well, a little bit more nutrients is required. Not that I starve my fish, but there's been times when they have not eaten for at least three or four days because they ate something so substantial. Anywho, uh, also, what that also signals is that piranhas are definitely more of like a social creature where you know they are they tend to follow basically the lead of others so as they were sort of attacking the plant in order to get to the frog they ended up destroying most of the plant and then just following it up later after the uh, frog was already eaten so that's something i haven't been able to show you uh basically you know there's just not enough hours in a day to sit here you know and observe everything but i did catch it few times noticing them you know kicking the plant around let's just say as they were taking nibbles at it thinking it's perhaps more food uh more parts of the frog or whatnot here it's a little daytime so it's probably some glare but here's the nubia i've been talking about just chewed up to pieces <laughs> but yeah i don't think it was intended as much as food as it was a uh, battleground of 
displacement of some anxiety and show off of who's the you know dominating one in the tank and whatnot so you can see it constantly they're trying to assert themselves among their pack members steal a spot on a hierarchy ladder but there it is not that i have not heard of piranhas obviously supplementing with um you know vegetables and other things like fruits and nuts and things that fall in the water and as they sort of present themselves an opportunity you know where a fish could strike eat it and pass it through their intestines with some benefits or not thinking it is something else believe me it happens all the time um we have to be very critical of making statements such as you know what fish or it is before we further or closer examine them just because they're able to eat it or they eat it it doesn't mean that they actually benefit from it or that this is their primary food source so you know argument can be raised uh, i've seen some you know fish keepers uh piranha enthusiasts uh, funko interruptus sorry my friends so like i said before you know the the uh, more or less supplementing vegetables and omnivoristic diets, you know, is necessary. As far as carnivores and vegetables, there's a whole different meaning to vegetable for a carnivore versus omnivore versus a herbivore. Obviously there's mechanics, biomechanics, and everything else involved in order to properly process the food that you are given. If you are a carnivore, 90% of your diet is made out of live food or other you know animal prey so that's the story the 10 percent comes from their from their intestines the pre-digested food by the prey and uh, you know uh so-called myths about uh wolves eating berries and piranhas eating seeds and now they're not myths <clears throat> They do eat the berries because they appear seasonally and they provide a certain amount of sugar and sustenance that they figured out. Why not supplement on something that pops out only for about, you know, a month out of the year, entire year. So they do take benefit of those little things, you know, those little gifts, but they don't have equipment to forge for bulbs or eat, you know, grain and <laughs> chew on grass. And even so, more so, they don't have the cohesive efficiency where what it means is they can't fermentate cellulose and they can't benefit from it like the herbivore or even the omnivore can't so you got to stick with bioscience first and foremost before you go into some techniques or whatever you know methods that you have heard from other fish keepers or other dog owners you know become a scientist biologist first and foremost before you become some sort of critic or a follower of other methods. Uh, so I have researched ton. Uh, I am very well acquainted with kibble and artificial food as I have served my own dogs for over a decade in uh, hopes of, you know, giving the, doing the best as I was told by the manufacturer and even the, uh, you know, veterinary uh, institutions that would recommend it. <laughs> anyway, I have learned better to go back into the raw and true science, bioscience, and figuring out for myself. And yes, I arrived here where raw is what we do with what we believe. And as far as piranha keeping or any type of predatory fish keeping, you have to realize that this is in, uh, by no means a amateur or, or standard hobby that you can engage into. It's definitely a massive amount of uh, effort and uh, well let's just say some of the feelings and ethics that we speak of uh, may stir up a bit so choose wisely my friends there's you know cichlids and goldfish and all the things that you can get into wonderful and not denying any of them have their specific you know attributes and other species of fish they are you know easily and and uh, legally uh, acquirable or you know sourceable and they provide ton of you know benefits to your psyche therapy as I call it you know uh, fish keeping is therapeutical it really is <coughs> a great way to connect with nature and it doesn't have to be <coughs> excuse me 
It doesn't have to be through, you know, some grotesque and elaborate, expensive or whatever, otherwise irresponsible, you know, fish keeping just to, I don't know, impress others or some shit. Anyway, so my cat is also awaiting his, his part of the meal. Hey, Wobbles, 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 hey, Sachishko. Yeah, he's a good cat. He's almost a year old. No, he's, yeah, he's a year old now. So he's, he has grown quite a bit too. He's actually massive. Um, that's it, my friends. I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of what we're doing over here and uh, some of the updates. Obviously, this thing is still waiting for a piece of glass or two that I have sort of, you know, Acquired about and it's everyone's in back order. Everyone's backed up because of all the riots and all the breakage of the windows And you can imagine, you know, all the damage I should destruction and damage while uh, protesting so Anyway, we'll wait our turn Everything's kind of pretty I would say uh, in homeostasis here <laughs> the girls the Larger piranhas are seems like they're mating again and again trying to you know At least and these guys well, like I said, they need a bigger home soon and they're exhibiting some new behaviors I haven't seen yet. So perhaps it's time to make a move um, Anybody and I really really am asking like seriously <laughs> If anybody knows anybody that has some connection to either big sheets of glass or a large existing tank that I can, you know, kind of chop apart, utilizing some of the pieces larger than what I have, which is 210, uh, I would really appreciate it that we can move forward. I know some people just simply, you know, may be connected to someone who has exactly what I need. One person's garbage could be other one's treasure. Looking for that type of you know token here because I'm really low on funds for this project. My funds actually kind of ran out, and now changing that uh, it's just delaying things. So don't want to be you know, uh, was we'll say cutting corners when I've gotten this far. So yeah, uh, another way is to definitely sign on on Patreon and <laughs> help support me there by donating you know just fuck it five bucks or whatever a month. It really helps because I can accumulate again and purchase something and trust me the filtration on this thing is going to be substantial as you can see 17 juveniles plus 10 adults combined in that tank which is reaching 1500 gallons if I get the glass that I desire to install here will give us enormous amount of space for these guys and with the bigger tank we can allow a bigger prey and a bigger pack to do its thing. So, so thank you for joining us. And if you are new here, my name is Marek. Everybody calls me Bear or Bearski. This is my channel. This is my spot where we hang out and discuss natural things in a predatory or carnivorous world, which are often found as our pets, like cats, dogs, and some, you know, fish. So, uh, thank you again, and I'll see you on the next one.